All right, Giants Nation. So I just finished watching the first episode of the Hard Knock series for the New York Giants. That's on HBO slash the Max app, which is HBO Max. If you have HBO, you also have access to the Max app, which is a pretty good app, especially when you're not paying for it or you are already paying for HBO. It's a great app to have. Go ahead, load it onto your tablet, watch it on your Fire Stick, especially if you've missed it on your HBO, on your cable box, just go ahead and download that app. If you're a Giants fan and you have HBO and you're not watching this, you're crazy, because it means you're really just not into the Giants. And I know for some of you fans, if the quarterback ain't who you want it to be, you have already checked out of this season before it's even started. But I like the series so far. I love all the background details that we're getting that we usually wouldn't get unless the media told us that this happened and they saw it, right? And, and I don't even know if the media has access to some of this stuff that the Hard Knocks TV production crew had access to. You were able to see some of the meetings that Joe was having with his staff and even a meeting between Joe and John Mara at the end of the episode. Well, I ended up jotting down some things that I saw that were interesting to me during this episode one. So the first thing I saw was Joe did not believe that Saquon Barkley was going to get paid. And I thought this was interesting because we know obviously Philly ended up paying him, but they also spoke about other running backs and Swift's name came up. And I don't think they saw Swift leave in Philly because Swift is now on the Bears and Swift is from Pennsylvania so they're like he's actually from Philadelphia so they're saying to themselves like why would the Eagles go out and sign Barkley if they have Swift but we saw what happened a lot of the running backs ended up shuffling and that actually was one of the conversations that they had too they spoke about all of the different running backs and how a lot of running backs are available so they didn't see Philly targeting Saquon Barkley because they thought, again, that Swift was going to stay because that's the hometown. And even though SB's from Pennsylvania, they still didn't look at it like it was a realistic option for them to go after Saquon Barkley. Joe and the rest of the Giants management team also spoke about possible Saquon Barkley replacements. They were looking at Zach Moss, who they were saying has really good pass protection. And then they mentioned Devin Singletary. They also mentioned the running back from... The Dallas Cowboys, Tony, which, hey, if we would have got Tony, that would have been really interesting, right? We're complaining about Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles. I wonder what the Cowboy fans would say. I feel like the complaining only matters if the player is good. Like a lot of us are throwing slander at Saquon Barkley, but realistically, that dude is a good running back. And that's part of the reason, too, because if the, if the RB4 goes to the Eagles, we're not like, oh man, you stole our RB4, but it's Saquon Barkley. We know he's good. Obviously, we know that there's an injury risk with Saquon Barkley, so we're going to throw that at the Eagles fans and talk shit. Now, the last thing I want to mention about Saquon Barkley was towards the end of the episode where Joe and John Mara had a conversation and saying that they would love to bring back Saquon Barkley, but you, you could kind of see that they were willing to move away from Saquon Barkley. There was a lot of conversations about having Saquon Barkley test the market. It really makes me feel like the conversation with Joe and Saquon Barkley about Barkley getting back to him was Joe expecting Barkley to take a contract from another team and say, hey, well, this team is offering this amount of money to me. Can you match that? And it just sounded like he didn't do that. Like he just went and signed a deal with the Eagles and said, F the Giants for not just offering me a contract. There was even a part of the episode where, again, Joe and the management team, they had a conversation about Saquon probably being the highest paid running back. I don't know if the ceiling in terms of how much they thought he would get paid was lower than expected but they definitely thought that he was the most talented running back available. But again, they didn't see Philly paying them because Swift is from Philly. And so they were just like, who's gonna pay him? And they were talking about the possibility of tagging and then trading him and then saying how they don't believe that somebody would trade for him, which if you watch my video and I'll tag the video, I was saying that if they really wanted to get a new quarterback, the best thing they could have done is trade Saquon Barkley last season but joe says that 
it was really stressful for him last year dealing with all the Saquon Barkley talk and the possible trade rumors, and he didn't like it. So while we're on the subject of quarterback, I want to disappoint some of you guys. Some of you guys are really obsessed with replacing Daniel Jones. You guys even are delusional and saying that, well, the Giants tried to trade up to replace Daniel Jones. And, you know, I ask you guys, why are they trying to trade up with a team that also needs a quarterback? Does that make sense? Why would I accept any of your trade offers if I know that the top three quarterbacks are projected to be good? So, you know, the Giants and the media played you. The media made you feel like the Giants wanted to replace Daniel Jones. But when you watch episode one of The Hard Knocks, that's not what I saw. I saw a GM and an owner that likes Daniel Jones. And I've always said that in my videos that you can be upset with Daniel Jones and want him gone, but he won't be gone until the people in charge are ready to replace him. I did not get that from episode one. What I got from episode one was the number one priority was fixing that offensive line. Joe even went into detail and spoke about the Seahawks and the Dolphins game and spoke about how bad the offensive line was because I get it. You thought that Tyrod Taylor and DeVito played better because statistically, well, Tyrod Taylor did play better. He averaged 7.4 yards per game. I think Daniel Jones was at a lowly 5.7. It's pretty shitty. But he did not have Saquon Barkley and he did not have Andrew Thomas. That is a big difference between Josh Zuto and Andrew Thomas. So I get it. It looks like people are making excuses for Daniel Jones. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because the GM and the owner, they back Daniel Jones and they make excuses for Daniel Jones. So it don't matter if I make excuses for him or if the Giants fans make excuses for him. We're irrelevant in the scheme of things, right? Like if you want Daniel Jones gone, our opinion of Daniel Jones, it does not matter. Only Joe and John Mara's opinions matter and they like Daniel Jones. Now, Joe did say that he knows that Daniel Jones is injury prone and he needs a backup plan, but it wasn't to draft a quarterback. And that's not what I'm seeing from episode one. Now, they did have a preview for episode two and JJ McCarthy was in it, but the preview was mainly about Malik Neighbors. They said that they were targeting Malik Neighbors. So I want to see in the next few episodes what happened with the whole JJ McCarthy thing. Were they kind of interested? Was it just the media feeding into the BS? Rich is one of those guys that was feeding you guys misinformation too. Oh, the Giants are done with Daniel Jones. They're not done with Daniel Jones. Again, the number one priority is protecting the quarterback for them, and they showed you that in episode one. They even said that they paid Daniel Jones $40 million to not hand the football off to a running back getting $12 million, meaning that next season, they're expecting Daniel Jones to throw the ball downfield. And this is why I feel like episode two is going to be about Malik Neighbors and them talking about how he's going to make the offense much better. So I can't wait for episode two. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is actually about Joe himself. So we did get some history with, with Joe. He spoke about how he started from the bottom like Drake, but like really started from the bottom as a scout. And it seems like over his career he has built friendships that have paid off so one thing they showed in this episode was joe talking to dan morgan who is the gm for the panthers and he had a relationship with the gm for the from the panthers so apparently they were scouting they had a conversation and dan lets him know that Brian Burns is available. And so that's how that trade ended up happening. And at a part of the episode, they did have a conversation You know, once they hired Shane that they wanted to make the pass rush more effective under Shane's. So just to recap, in my opinion, it seems like this first episode really showed that Joe came out thinking that, hey, I need to fix the offensive line first. And then obviously I need to improve the defense. Then I need to have a plan for Daniel Jones. So that includes the backup, which we haven't gotten to that part of the timeline yet where he 
signs Drew Locke, so maybe that may be in a future episode, but he did say he needed a contingency plan because he's aware that Daniel Jones gets hurt a lot, but he did not give up on Daniel Jones. It seems like he's ready to roll with Daniel Jones if he's healthy this year, and for some of y'all, that may be disappointing, but you're paying him already. I don't know what you guys want the Giants to do. Did you want the Giants to become the Denver Broncos and just cut Daniel Jones because you don't like him? But... I thought episode one was really good. I can't wait for the rest of the episodes. Unfortunately, it seems like they're going to be releasing them every week, which probably is a good strategy because I would watch every episode between right now and Friday. So if you're curious as to when the next episode will be, it will be next Tuesday and it will run all the way until July the 30th. If you don't have a subscription to HBO, you can go to max.com and sign up for the Max app and pay nine dollars a month with ads or 16.99 ad free outside of that there are other ways to watch it but y'all if you don't have a fire stick and if you don't know how to jailbreak them you're in trouble you're gonna have to pay for max which i suggest you know you, you could pay for the for max not dollars a month is not anything you know you could cancel after the giants hard knock series is over but they actually have a ton of stuff to watch on that Max app. So for anyone who doesn't feel like $9 is breaking the bank per month, I'm sure you will continue to pay for Max. Or if you have HBO, but you don't really you watch HBO, maybe you're not available when it, it, it's aired live. You can just watch it on the app. But, but tell me what you thought about episode one if you watched it. Did you watch it? Did you read about it? Did you go to other YouTube channels and they gave their opinion? What are your thoughts on episode one of the Hard Knocks or just the news coming out of episode one? Because everybody's going to have their own opinion on what they saw. Some people might say that they saw something that I didn't see. So tell me what you think. Comment down below.